Day 39 on my 108 temple pilgrimage around Shikoku. See what I did there? Didn't say 88. Because I'm actually doing the 10 Bangai or Beikaku, depending on how you want to view them. They're actually 108 temples, and I'm in a stretch of a lot of Bangai that are difficult to get to. I've, I've hit a couple of difficult ones, three and seven, but now I'm trying to hit uh, 13, 14, 15. I hit 13 today. I was on my way to 14, didn't quite make it. And then tomorrow will be all day trying to get to 15. And then the day after that, we'll be trying to get back onto the Ohenro Path. And then there are a few more upcoming ones that are a bit out of the way. So altogether, I'm hitting 108 temples. I actually have hit more than that because I've hit a few Okunuin that are not part of the actual uh, temples, the 88 or the 100, or the 88 or the 20. Today was a long day in part because I had to leave my apart, leave my hotel and then take a train and then start walking. It felt kind of weird, like a salaryman going to work. It made me realize things. Uh, the first three hours of the morning were pretty much covering what the train covered in about six minutes. So it made me you know, sort of realize that difference between you know, how long it took to get somewhere in the past versus how long it takes to get somewhere today. And that was part of the reason I wanted to do this pilgrimage was to sort of experience time and distance as people throughout most of history actually experienced it. On the way, after about three hours, I stopped at a family mart and I was getting ready to leave when a buddy from two days ago came in. So we just happened to be at the same, uh, stop at the same convenience store for a little bit of break. Uh, he had been one of the people at dinner the night before I went to Yokuminenji. So I met the guy at the family mart and then we all met, I met him again at the top at Temple 65, Sankakuji, where I also met three other buddies I had come across, uh, two people that I had also had dinner with. So it was nice seeing everyone again at the top at Temple 65, which is a really beautiful temple. Uh, set up in the mountains, it has a enormous cherry tree in which the branches have extended out that is probably about a week away from blooming. So we were a little bit too early for that, but it was a nice afternoon. We all had lunch together and I just wanted to spend the afternoon there, but I had to get on my way. I was heading to Bangai number 12. Uh, they were heading to Temple 66, which is a huge uh, Nansho temple, the highest temple, I think, on the pilgrimage. Bangai 13 was really cool. It used to be a huge shokubo, this old wooden building, and you actually pray inside. Uh, it's closed down now because everyone drives and no one stays, but uh, it had been built for like walking pilgrims to stay at because it's kind of in the middle of nowhere. Uh, I then discovered like buses don't run there, so I started to head towards Temple 14 and kind of hit a highway where there was a bus, uh, there were four buses a day. I was 20 minutes away from the next bus, which was quite l lucky. So I took that back to a station and then took a train home and got back to the hotel uh, about 12 hours after I left it and actually booked another night. I started to figure out the remaining time. I think I have about 10 days left. Uh, I tried to call a few hotels where I would want to be on uh, Saturday night and they were all booked. So I just said, hey, why don't I stay at the hotel I'm at again? I think I'll be a little bit, not have as much to walk on Saturday. I'm not 100% sure, but then uh, tomorrow I'm going to try to call for Sunday, Monday, start booking the rest of the trip. So I definitely have places to stay. Things are getting uh, a little crowded out there. I end up going in a circle again, partly on, on the way to uh, Bangai 13. There were all these signs pointing to the Henro Path to the right, so I, I took it, I got off the road, I climbed up, and then all the arrows pointed to the right, and I'm like, I think it's to the left, but everything pointed to the right, and 10 minutes later, I came back down to where I had started from. So there's a circular, built, circular loop built into the Henro Path on the way to Bangai 13. From Bangai 13, uh, at Bangai 13, a nice monk who lived at the uh, temple uh, advised I'd really try to get to temp Bangai 14. Uh, I was heading there and then I realized it doesn't really matter if I get there or not because I'm picking up where I leave off today, tomorrow. So I caught a bus. I was trying to, I was thinking of hitchhiking or trying to catch a ride. Uh, the place where it came out to was a tunnel and 
it was difficult. People going into the tunnel couldn't stop because they're heading into the tunnel. And then people coming out looked at me and I think some wanted to stop and talk to me, but then it quickly became a curve and they kept on going. So I tried to look for, forlorn to get a ride, but the geography wasn't helping. Uh, tomorrow, I think I'm just gonna take a train and then take a taxi, hoping it's not too expensive to where I uh, left off yesterday, in part because the buses are so infrequent and I think the first bus doesn't get there till near nine, and I'd like to get an earlier start than that. Uh, so tomorrow we'll start with a nice, dark, long, tunnel with a what, about a two foot sidewalk. So a scary start to day 40. One final thing about today is that it was definitely weird heading out by train. So sort of walking to the station, getting on the train, riding the train for about 30 minutes and then getting off the train and starting. It's different than just climbing out of bed, putting on the backpack and heading out on the adventure. Uh, but I'll be here for four more nights, and that will be my routine. I passed a couple of udon restaurants, so on the way home, I was like, I'm going to get udon for dinner. Uh, they're open six in the morning till three in the afternoon. No udon restaurants nearby are open at night. So uh, maybe I'll get it for breakfast one day this week.